All right. Now, how does Hoover go about trying to do this? So we've talked about all the problems. How is government trying to stop this? Well, remember that whole laissez-faire thing, right, that started with Warren G. Harding and then continued with Calvin Coolidge? Well, that continues with Herbert Hoover. Hoover was actually a cabinet member for Harding, so that's who he learned from, right? Um, so as all these problems started to erupt all across the country, Hoover felt that it wasn't the government's place to get involved. He felt that, well, first of all, if you're going to help your countrymen, right, he felt that churches and charities should be able to do that. He didn't think the government should get involved and try and manage the economy, right? Uh, when the time comes, oh, I got a little typo there, sorry, that should be a lowercase h. Right? Some of you, of course, are circling it and you can't wait to yell at me in class. All right, so in 1932, he created the Reconstruction Finance Corporation. Okay, this is really kind of the extent to uh, what he tries to do to curb the, the Depression. But, it, I mean, it's a start. And, and let's just make sure we all understand this. There's no one that could have prevented the Great Depression from happening. All right, it was just the, the carefree spirit of the 1920s combined with a couple other factors that, that led to it. Right, but he is actually going to uh, lose the faith of the American people. I mean, he took, just tried to do a couple things, right? The Hoover Dam, that's the dam that was seen in the first Transformers movie. Okay, he begins building that in the 1920s. Well, not he, but he obviously uh, sets up the program to do it, right? But even though he tries to do some of these public works projects, right, the American people are, are just do not think he's doing enough, all right? And the steps that he does take, they feel it's just too little too late. So kind of funny here, we'll talk about it in class in a little bit, but in this period you start to get, a, get what are called Hooverisms, all right? And they're just, you know, uh, new words or slangs or terms that get thrown around during the Great Depression poking fun or blaming Herbert Hoover. All right, for example, this one here, the guy with his pockets turned inside out, that was referred to as a Hoover flag, all right? So, you know, you were kind of blaming him for you not having any money. This was a Hoover wagon or a Hoover car. All right, it's a car whose engine was ripped out and sold, and then they attached the car shell to a horse. All right, um, there are a lot of other ones out there. I got, I got a list that I'll put up on the board so we can see. All right, and here's kind of a visual summary just so you can see what causes the Great Depression versus how the government is going to go about responding to it. So if you need to pause it to glance through it, you know, definitely do that. All right, and then the last thing we'll look at is the bonus army. Right, and this is kind of like uh, one of the, the lowest points of Hoover's presidency and kind of like the, the, the tipping stone here. But uh, World, War, World War I veterans were promised a bonus, all right, 1940. Unfortunately, it's 1932. They don't have jobs. They don't have money, right? They know that they have that bonus waiting for them. So they go to Washington, D.C. to see if they can get their money early. And, you know, Congress is like, hey, we don't have any money to give you. And, and the, the World War I vets are going to be very unhappy about that, you know, definitely feeling like they've been betrayed or the country's forgetting about them, right? So rather than just peacefully going home, right, some World War I veterans are going to stay and hang out in D.C. to protest, right? And they camp out in a huge, what's called a Hooverville, and I'll show you a picture on the next slide, right? But their whole idea is to try and protest the government into giving them their money, Ultimately, the government sends troops in, which is kind of a, an ugly moment because you're looking at, you know, you know, veteran troops who fought for our country, and now we have new troops, and they're fighting each other, and, and everybody's fighting, and it's just not a good, good circumstance altogether, right? But they eventually end up going home, <coughs> and the government does not give them their bonus, right? Now, 1932 election. This is where we're going to finish up, right? The American people are going to vote, and you'll see an electoral map on the next page. They are going to vote overwhelmingly for a Democratic candidate, for FDR, Franklin D. Roosevelt, right? That's three straight Republican presidents, and then we get a Democrat in 1932, right? Take a peek at the map here, all right? So this is a Hooverville, right? It's, it's a bunch of uh, cardboard houses, wood houses, little shacks all over the place, and, you know, these people are homeless, and, and that's, you know, kind of the only living quarters that they're capable of, of living in, right? And that was just a flyer trying to get people to join the the bonus army march to Washington, right? But here's the Electoral College map, okay? They, they kind of messed the colors up here because I know I always train you guys that red is Republican and blue is Democrat, all right? But they, they got them backwards here a little bit. So FDR is the red, all right? And he was the Democratic candidate. And you look at the electoral votes, it was 472 to 59, all right? So Herbert Hoover was running for re-election, and I don't think the American people... I don't think the American people wanted him to be president anymore, all right? So, I mean, if you think that that's a landslide victory, wait until you see 
uh, FDR's bid for re-election. All right, so if you need to go back and, and rewind things and go back and look at it, all right, definitely. And also, if you have a question at any point, because I'm not sitting, you know, in real life, I'm not sitting there next to you, okay, jot the question down on the side of your notes so when you come in, you can show me that question and we can get it answered, right, so that there's no misunderstandings. I almost said, are there any questions, kind of like I do in class. All right, that's it for Section 1. See you tomorrow.